I'll tell you what, even though that's like the one of the, the main bosses, that didn't take as long as some other bosses took me. But again, again, I guess I'm seasoned now. But that fight was fun. That was cool. Oh, wait, that was the game? Wait, that's the game? I'm a little sad. I'm I'm only sad because <sighs> Oh man. But I'm still Oh man. I don't I have mixed feelings, man. I was ready for more. Oh, that hurts. That hurts a little bit. Damn, dude. Black Myth Wukong completed. I give this game. Somewhere between it. To be fair, this review will touch more on the things that are quote unquote bad, because we all know how good this game is. So bear with me. My reasons for that is because even though the combat does it does have fluidity and such to it and i'm pretty sure they patched some of these things out so some of my comments are based off of my early experience when i first got the game is that there were there are moments in there are moments in the game where like the combat does feel a little janky and the movement is a little janky in the chapter two fighting the the, the wind rat dude i didn't know about the whole wind fan weapon or whatever, which I, I, I didn't even get it in that fight. Get him to like two thirds health, the arena shrinks, but it's not, there's no visual cue. It's a matter of like, hey, I'm trying to move, but I can't seem to move, but I was able to move here before, but now I can't. When he's like more like a third of his health, then they have more of a visual, like, oh, you see the tornadoes and all this wind currents. It's like, oh, that's, I can't go there sense like things like that throughout the game i think is what like kind of ruins the immersion of in the buy-in into just accepting the game for what it is as i'm talking through it as i'm bringing the score down a little bit definitely an eight i wish it did have some more exploring which it does have exploring it just does it in a, a, a unique way that a, after a while i kind of start to give it more credit for what it did but then again Chapter six, I just feel like is so weird. They just randomly give you the ability to fly, which I guess, you know what? I know why, like, that's why I was saying that part felt like a throw in, where it's like, hey, people know that Wukong flies on a cloud, but throughout the whole game, you can't do that. So let's give them a section of the game where you can do that. So that's why that part just felt so half baked, where it's like, just throw it in so people can be happy that they were able to fly like Wukong, Sun Wukong can, but in reality, it was like, I think if they would have left that out, yeah, some people would have been like, oh, I wish you could fly, but I don't think anyone would have um, docked the game for not having that in the game, but because they decided to put it in the game, now you have to do it right, and they didn't, they fell flat on that, so that was kind of just like, not gonna take down your score for it but I probably should and somebody out there would dock them for it but I'm not going to I'm gonna leave I'm gonna stick on my eight but I will say that that chapter by itself sucks that whole concept was half-baked if you're gonna do it you got to do it right anyway whew, definitely a good game if you're not into these kind of games it's definitely something to, something to get on sale at the bare minimum but this is a full price game to me, 100%. I think Liza P is cleaner than Black Myth Wukong in some ways. Um, and Liza P, the exploration felt consistent to the design of the game. Like the game design I feel like was consistent. So like, even though it's not as explorative as like Elden Ring, obviously, which is again the intent you could tell like the game's design and intent was consistent through the game's process so it's like that's kind of the difference right where it's like 
when you can tell what the game exploration barometer is, it makes it easier for you to understand the navigation of the game. Whereas Black Myth Wukong, it felt like they weren't sure which way they wanted to go, then they ended up being more linear, and then sometimes they wanted to flirt with explorative, but it was, again, the language and such of the game's consistency wasn't really there. So me as the player was kind of like confused. But yeah, no, the, the game's consistency and its direction makes a huge difference in the experience. And so for that alone, if I, I felt like um, Liza P was like a nine. And, I, and Elden Ring is a 9.5. All the rings up there. Liza is neck and neck. And then this is right behind them. Like really close, but right behind them. Because like I said, the, the consistency in certain things are just like maybe down the road, their next big project, I'll be looking forward to see what they have. Um, but I think this is a very strong entrance into the game making space. Oh, and that was the other thing. Actually, you know, I might have to jock, dock them again for this. In Black Myth Wukong, the storytelling between chapters wasn't clear and it was confusing to me. For example, when the game first starts, you can kind of have an idea you're this monkey, you think you're Wukong, you're not exactly sure. Kind of start listening to the dialogue and I got like, okay, I guess I'm not Wukong. I'm trying to get to Wukong. Fine. And then, how did chapter one end again? I forgot exactly how chapter one ended. But however it ended, it was the transition from one to two felt natural. But then when the way chapter two ends, right, because the way chapter one ends, you beat the, the big bear dude. And you're like, oh, we're gonna go and find the relics or something like that. You're like, oh, okay, cool. So you end up in chapter two. Then you go through chapter two, and when chapter two ends, when you beat the, oh, the, the yeah, the, the sand dude. You beat him, and then all of a sudden you're just in the snow, question mark? Why am I here? Yeah, the wind sage, right. When you beat the wind sage, and all of a sudden you're in the snow in chapter two, and you're just, chapter three, and you're just like, what brought me here? And when you beat the boss of chapter three, then also you're in chapter four and you're like, I understand my journey in the chapter. I just don't understand how the, ch the ending of the chapter translates to the next chapter. And to me, it was a, that made it just like, oh, just that made the game feel more like a boss rush than it needed to feel. Like I know there was a lot of bosses and I actually enjoyed the fact that there are a lot of bosses in this game. But, oh, and this, this was the other thing I loved so much about this game, the, cha the transitions. But yeah, bro, the, I have no idea what's happening, but it's awesome. Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? I would say that's a bad thing. I mean, it's still good because awesome is part of the experience and that is always a good thing. But... You know, I was like, again, all right, I'm gonna stop beating a dead horse. Anyway, but I, I will say, I'm glad I, I, I'm glad I took back what I said about the, um, I'm glad I took back not going with a seven and a half and sticking to the eight because these music videos, as they call them, were so damn good. All of these were so damn good. All of them, all of them were unique. All of them were so unique in their, the design of all these stories, these arts, the artwork styles are different. The storytelling was very interesting. It was like, you know, when Pixar did, used to do all those um, short film contests like this, any one of these contests, would, wait, would blow those types of things out of the water, in my opinion. They were so fucking good. Yeah, but these music videos are so damn good, dude. One caught me off guard. Yeah, two was so good. Yeah, this one was good. 
the first music video catches you off guard because you're like, oh, what's going on? And then it's awesome. And then again, you think you have an idea of what the, the, the music videos will look like. And then you get the chapter two, then you get this like stop motion, what feels like a real, you know, like a stop motion film essentially. And you're like, oh, this is a completely different approach. And it's so engaging because it's so unique and so fucking good. <laughs> I think it's like, like Lord of the Rings. I assume Black Myth is like an epic journey and we jump around in the game. Maybe, I mean, that's true. I just feel like I wish that they, I think, I just feel like they could have somehow made that more clear that it's just this epic journey. But the difference in Lord of the Rings and this is that in that epic journey, you have more characters at play and the transitions from like, you know, coming from one part of the world to another part of the world or one person's story to another part person's story is pretty under, you can understand the transition. Whereas this, like the journey, it, you are the journey. It is centered around you. You fight this boss and also you're just in Pagoda. Like what, why am I in Pagoda? Why am I here? You know, it's like, like you don't really know why you're there until you get to the end. And then when you get to the end and then it's like, that's it. Now you're somewhere else. You're like, wait, why am I here? You don't know why you're there until you get to the end. Oh, okay, that's why I was here. It's like, you know, it was like, it was like that a lot. And I just think they could have done a better job. So yeah, I, I, unfortunately, if I had to tie in all of those aspects, I think uh, seven and a half feels rough to say. But I think eight, no, okay. eight. Even though my explanation justifies a seven and a half in a way, just saying that out loud sounds so wrong. The game is so good. You know what I mean? You know, I'll, I'll just, I'll end on this. Just to kind of clarify the point about the story transition is like, in Lord of the Rings, obviously you don't know, I mean, obviously unless you know by reading a whole bunch of the books and stuff like that. Yeah, the experience is very fun, even with its flaws exactly. That's, what, that's why I, I can't even muster up saying seven and a half out loud, you know? But, um, like, I, I can't. Like, I, I'll give it. A, I'll give it. A, I'll give it the eight. You know, like, I, I, seven and a half just sounds so wrong. Um, yeah, it's just like, I'll just say this though, just um, about the whole story. Like, it's one thing. Like in Lord of the Rings, like there's an element that you don't know, but you still understand everything else, and then that element you don't know gets brought up to you. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Whereas in this regard, it's kind of the opposite. I don't know what I'm doing here, but okay. <laughs> it's like, we'll get there eventually.